Good evening and welcome to Clash of the Titans with me, Mike Graham, Julia Hartley Brewer, Peter Blexley is in for Jeremy Kyle this week, so it'll be a bit quieter. Uh, and Kevin <laughs> O'Sullivan is here as well. Good evening to all Good of you. Uh, so, I mean, a load of stories to talk about this week. Some of them are kind of interrelated. I'm going to kick it off with, um, you know, Shabana Mahmood and the uh, the Justice Ministry's idea of how to control the prison population, basically let them all out. Um, you know, don't put them <laughs> in problem prison. Solved. No, it's no problem. And then she also brilliantly came out and made a statement in the House of Commons in which she said that, you know, Obviously, if they do misbehave after we've let them out, um, we'll put them under surveillance, uh, we might tag them, or in the final analysis, we'll put them back in jail. Mind and you blame. just go, what is going on? And, of course, once again, they managed to completely screw it up by getting people to get even bigger cars and more expensive cars than last time, where they only managed one Lamborghini. Now we've got Rolls Royces worth Bentleys. 300 grand, Bentleys. We've got a I mean, Bugatti next time, presumably. Yeah. You know, well, it's a couple of mini quids. It's a fashion now, isn't yeah. it? There's a guy who's been done seven, well, seven years sentence. Ha, ha, ha. That right. only means three and a half years under the yes. previous thing. Now it's just three and a bit years. Mm. But he, yeah, he'd be done for kidnapping a GBH, basically torturing someone. We yeah. know he did it because he... <laughs> He recorded it on his own <laughs> camera phone, for goodness sake. Right. And these people coming out of prison, let off early. Now, I completely accept Labour saying, you know, it's the Tories' fault they didn't build any prisons. This yeah. is completely fair. Yeah. I wonder how long that's going to last. Is. At the end of the day, there are some of the people going behind bars we've seen as two-tier justice. Yeah. People who've written hurty tweets, uh, people who've said things which I think are appalling and horrible, but nevertheless clearly are not a physical danger to people. And proper wrongers who've been sentenced, yeah. in this case, to people who've yeah. got more than five years behind bars. You're a serious criminal. Serious at that criminal. Point, but they're back on the streets cheering, and often their mates. Exactly. Because well, I've, I've got one for Peter here, because, you know, one of the guys who came out and got into a Lamborghini Urus, which is about 250000 without a radio, you know, basically he, he was done for fraud. Now, oh, I, thought that, I thought there used to be a law which said that the police could confiscate the proceeds of crime. The this Proceeds of Crime Act of 2000. There you go. Still very much an active mm. piece of legislation. Not right. working very well, <laughs> though, is it? <laughs> no, no, but, but not used anywhere near no. as much as it should do. In fact, I was told a story just the other day of a bloke who was serving four years mm. um, and they wanted to keep another 200... He had, If he surrendered £200,000, they would release him early. Right. But he said, no, that works out 100 grand a year. I'll stay where I am. <laughs> wow. Grand. Wow. Which shows the folly of yeah. the legislation. L L Labour, I mean, you're right, Julia. You know, the, the I mean, let, let's just end the show now. Yeah. 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 Tor yeah. You're, you're right, Julia. Right, let's go. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the Tories, of course, should have built more jails. Yeah. Uh, and the La Labour have every right to say it's their fault. But as we go forward, Labour must come up with some plans to build jails. This but they're is, not going this to. This is ridiculous. They've got a review, mm. led by the former completely wet, very nice Useless man, David Justice Gork. Secretary yeah. David Gork, who could be in the Green Party for yeah. his politics. Yeah. And, and this is a man who, who, like most of the Labour Party, is of the view that prison doesn't work. Well, it does, because it yeah. keeps people behind bars right. when they committed crimes. Um, and that what we need to do is have more community sentences well, we know they don't yeah. sort it right. That's why people end up going to prison in the in the. But you know, we hear the new week. sentence, though. The new sentence that they're, they're, they're contemplating is going to come in uh, is house arrest, uh, where yeah. people will have to spend their sentences right. in their homes. And you can do it now electronically, pretty efficiently. But what they'll end up doing is what they do anyway, just sitting around watching Netflix. Right. And they're going to give the point them is, a, you say it's easy enough to do, but in order to do that properly, you need to have proper surveillance. You yeah. need to have proper people working to yeah. make sure they're not running away whenever they feel yeah. like it. And also, you have to have a home. A lot of the people who are coming out of prison yeah, this true. week that's haven't got a home true. to well, go to. Yeah, what the house? Bentleys. They'll go and what sleep, in, yeah, sleep in a Bentley <laughs> or sleep in a tent or, you know... I'm sure, that, I'm sure, given a lot of these men are actually proper wrong and, um, you know, the wives, the girlfriends and the and the kids have taken yeah. a beating over the years as well. Yeah. A lot of these people have been in prison for the stuff that's involved domestic yeah. violence. Yeah. I'm sure those women, are, they're absolutely thrilled that they're yeah. going to have these men back in their homes. Mm. But this electronic surveillance that they're suggesting as an alternative to prison will, of course, be monitored by a private private company. Yeah. And we know yeah. the names of all of those. Of course, yeah. And we know how many scandals there have yeah. been wrapped around them. But with regards to the appointment of David Gork, do you think it was just because he was available <laughs> slash unemployed? <laughs> <laughs> he got this gang. He he's he's, he's very this, possibly. central casting boring man. Yeah, he really he? is. You want a boring man. Yeah. David also, Gork no, exudes get, tedium. But you get political cover by appointing us. It's cross parties who oh, appoint yeah. a Tory, but yeah. actually a Tory who agrees with pretty much yeah. everything that you but, already think. But also, think. people like him and, and others who are kind of, you know, anti-prison, as you say, um, they love talking about how useless the, the prisons work and how bad they are and how terribly overcrowded they are. Well, I took loads of calls this week from people who are former prisoners, some of whom who said, actually, 
actually, it prison sorted me out. Yeah, I'm really I heard glad that I went. Yeah, because yeah. because I, I learned how to become a plumber, or I learned how to become, you know, he said you can do things if you want. There was a woman who was done for, for class A drugs distribution. Yeah, right. She came out and, and no no longer commits crime. So it's wrong to say that but, it but doesn't But it tends work. to be the people that have done the lengthier jail terms. Because yeah. when you've missed five Christmas days, when you've missed dozens of birthdays, yeah. high days, holidays, and all of the rest, it gives you plenty of time to consider what you've done, the harm you caused, the victims you created, yeah. and change your ways. Well, just realise the, the victimhood of yourself because your life has been moved. But this is the thing, Robert, I've told that short, short prison sentences... You'd love to miss more. <laughs> short prison sentences don't work. Well, is that an argument to not have short prison sentences or an argument to have longer prison yeah. sentences? What we need to do is we need to spend money on criminal justice system. We need to spend it on policing and on, on, on the trials. We need to, you know, justice delayed is justice yeah. denied. You know, people taking four years to get to That's court ridiculous. for sexual assaults and things now. But we also need to spend money on, on you know, on rehabilitation. The first role of prisons is is to is to punish. And Everybody forgets that. Yeah, and then and then deterrence, and then third, making it safe. But also for rehabilitation. It shouldn't be the first order. But you look at some of the Scandinavian countries, they spend a fortune, but they have a very low reoffending rate, but they also deal with people very quickly. But you need to spend money on that. You can't have a, just a few prison officers um, under-trained, under-valued, under-resourced, and, and, and have people in their cells 23 yeah. hours a day right. smoking. Yeah. Well, listen, that gonna is move, not going to I've got to move you all on, because now it's time for Kevin's um, uh, subject, which is similar, uh, about a man who was locked up uh, who's never coming out of jail. Yeah, I mean, what's in the dock here is, has been uh, the two-tier justice system brought in by Keir Starmer to deal with the summer riots, which uh, is a, a clear and present standing scandal mm. uh, that uh, white working-class rioters, while, as Julia says, other offenders wait up to four years to be heard in court, were in court, were uh, arrested, tracks. charged, convicted in court within about four days yeah. and given extraordinary, grotesquely disproportionately long sentence. I mean, a lot of them went very quickly because they pleaded guilty, though, as well. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, they were given very poorly. Yeah, but that, that, that is... That, that but is, they were is convinced a... to do that, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, but, but having said that, Mike, m most people have to wait four years right. to plead guilty. Well, tell us about the guy well, who... Well, this is who... about Peter Lynch, 61-year-old yeah. Peter Lynch, uh, who died uh, last Saturday night in Moreland Prison in South Yorkshire. The Daily Telegraph and other newspapers reporting that he killed himself. Right. Uh, either way, it's a very sad story. The guy, uh, as far as we can work out, he, he was a father of four. He was a grandfather. He didn't have a criminal record. Uh, he was obviously a bit of an oddball. He turned up at the Rotherham uh, riot and stood outside that hotel that they disgracefully tried to burn with migrants in it. He didn't do anything. The judge, when sentencing him, him, said, you didn't actually yeah. commit any violence. Right. You didn't... Uh, there didn't is footage violence. of him pushing back against the police yeah. cordon, which yeah, but doesn't that, look but terrible. That's not, scum. Yeah. The, but the judge made yeah. a point of saying you didn't attack anyone. Oh, yeah. uh, so his crime, uh, he, he pleaded guilty to violent disorder. I think he was given bad advice, yeah. I'll tell you that. I think so. uh, uh, his crime was to yell nasty things at the police, yeah. call them scum, call them corrupt. Uh, he called migrants uh, child killers. Yeah. Uh, right, and yeah. also he held up... And there's the sign that he had a placard that was completely sort of uh, indiscernible. I, I think an awful lot of people would agree with a lot of that. I, mm. Well, I, I can't but even work MPs. out what the hell it means. Any, anyway, it's the a point kind of is David Icke rap sheet. So, yeah, yeah, yeah you know. exactly. So he's, he's a conspiracy theorist. He held up that, shouted nasty things at the police, was persuaded to be, plead guilty to violent disorder, even though he wasn't violent, and he got two years and eight months. Yeah. That's grotesque. Right. Yeah. It is absolutely appalling. And the poor guy you know, his life has now ended, and I, I think Keir Starmer's got Look, answer. I think he committed a crime. I think you turn up to a riot and you stand outside an asylum hotel where people were literally cowering in fear, staff were barricading themselves in, and you're calling people you know, rapists and child killers. Um, and, and there were women and children in that asylum hotel. Um, I'm sorry, you have committed a crime. You called the Don't police Don't go to gun. jail for that. No, no, but this is my thing. You're allowed to go I think, to I think the right. length of time... I think, I, think, I think possibly a suspended sentence, yeah. or if not, a much shorter a fine sentence. or something. And again, we don't know the... It's not confirmed the circumstances of his death. This will have to go to an inquest, obviously. But, but when you see, you know, Hugh Edwards... Hugh Edwards looking at children being raped on his phone, being sent that, those images, yeah. not, not telling the police, not doing anything about it, asking for more. I'm sorry, you don't go to prison? I just find that well, extraordinary. Mm. People who write also, tweets... Also, what, what, what we've got here, though, is just one last point. Just one last point. That what we've got here is uh, courts, judges, doing the Prime Minister's bidding, yeah. and that is wrong. Yes, and there is a scandal coming down the line, possibly in some years to come. 
because many of these people that entered early guilty pleas were persuaded to do so because they were told they'd get a discount on their <laughs> yeah. sentence. Yeah. That would then be further discounted. And was that told to them by the CPS then? No, the, judge, the mm. lawyers would have said that. Uh, yeah. That's what you're told. Yeah. Yeah. And, and no, the whole point of being guilty is... And duty yeah. solicitors yeah. represented... So Legal aid lawyers, people. they always say yeah. that, don't they? Yeah. Plead yeah. guilty. Yeah. Yeah. So there is going to be a scandal coming down the line because some people are going to wake up get suitable legal representation, mm. get their hands on the case papers, and then when they are examined, they will say, there wasn't any evidence here to convict no. you, yeah. and yet you pleaded guilty. Yep. Rest on me, there will be many such scandalous yeah, yeah, yeah. cases mm. coming down the line. I mean, I feel the same way about, is it Lucy Connolly, yeah. the, uh, the, the, the law yeah, yeah, 31, well. yeah, 31, 31 months. 31 months. No, I'm sorry, what she wrote was horrible. In fact, she thinks, he says, I wouldn't, want to, I wouldn't want to be in the same room as this woman, I don't certainly want to be a childminder for my kid. Um, a horrible views that she had, and she was inciting violence, but it was, it was a stupid message put yeah, online. Yeah, right. It was then taken down. Um, I, I'm sorry, the idea that in any way she, uh, you know, she did things that would actually have meant yeah, other people not. were, were yeah. at risk is absurd. And again, it's all proportion. Mm. People, people can shoplift. People can commit violence outside a pub on a Saturday night. They don't get that sort no. of sentence. No, also, also, the whole point of that sentencing process was to stop the rights from going on. Yeah. And you can yes. say, all right, well, so pretty sh week. short, sharp shock, stop the rights. They've stopped that now. Lucy Connolly, we're talking yeah, weeks yeah, later, yeah, 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 she yeah. was already in a place where her life had been ruined. You didn't need to put her in prison. But yeah. what was made me laugh is when people have heaped praise on Keir Starmer, mm. as though he was really? some kind of that. messiah who came down from upon high and stopped the riots. He had a dress rehearsal for this yeah. in 2011 when he yeah. was DAPP. Yeah. He knew exactly what levers to pull. Yeah, yeah. it's the yeah. only well, thing... they were pretty it's... late getting to those levers yeah. in 2011. I was uh, on air that time when we were actually having people calling up and genuinely saying, you know, the riots have come to my neighbourhood. They're burning yeah. down Does the anyone know where yeah. my son is? Because I'm worried for his yeah. life. He kept, the yeah. kept saying, oh, those are not protests. Yes, they are. Right. They're protests about your migrant crisis yeah. that you make worse every single day. But, I mean, even if we were to give him the benefit of the doubt and say, well, at least he did something right. Yeah. He hasn't done anything right since then, and we've got more to say I don't about think he did do anything um, right. I think well, he did something profoundly wrong. As I wrong. say, you may or may not wish to give him the benefit of the doubt. Obviously, you don't want to. That's fine. No problem <laughs> not at all. Not going to. You know, no, we don't get it. <laughs> Sorry, I've had a, a bit of an aneurysm there. <laughs> <laughs> um, stick around, folks. More to come on Clash of the Titans. The gun cop cleared of killing Chris Carver has a bounty put on his head. And should Britain cough up slavery reparations? No. That's coming up after the break. Welcome back to Clash of the Titans. Peter, you've been very good as a substitute for Jeremy Carl, I must say. Um, I've got a slightly different perspective sitting over here on the good side. Yeah. Uh, is this, normally, is this that's, the good that's side? That's the bad side normally, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah we've got Jeremy our hair Carl. going back yeah. as Jeremy it's, talks. Jeremy's just <laughs> shouting at everybody. Anyway, <laughs> Peter, uh, you, you've, got our, you, you've obviously got the story of the week, I think, uh, on this one. Yeah, it's dominated the headlines. Yeah. The rightful acquittal. Yeah. of a charge of murder yeah. of Sergeant Martin Blake, mm. the kind of supremely fit, dedicated highly trained, courageous police officer who would go into places and situations that most people would fear to tread, mm. in fact, would run away from. Yeah. So when confronted with an extremely dangerous situation back in September of 2022, he discharged one shot from his firearm that went through the windscreen of an Audi and killed Chris Cabba, mm. who, of course, after the trial was concluded, we all found out was a gun-toting, unscrupulous piece of garbage with a list of criminal convictions and, and we were dating so back surprised, to when we? he was 13. Yeah. yeah. But um, isn't it funny that this was the picture that was put out yeah. uh, by the family, who I it's would lovely. question quite considerably uh, as to what their motive was, because from yeah. the beginning, not only were they pushing to get the police officer's name identifiable uh, so that his life yeah. could be put in danger, but they also then pushed the judge to not reveal... The, the background to this even guy, Even after even the, after the verdict. Can, after yeah. the verdict. Yeah, I mean, yeah. This is the thing on this case. Uh, we, we, we've seen this again and again. I mean, it's so similar to the Mark Duggan case, which sparked the 2011 yeah. riots. Uh, yeah. This feeling that there was injustice mm. uh, because this man had been shot. I mean, again, totally banged to rise. I want to shake Sergeant Martin Blake's hand. I really do. I said, thank, thank you for keeping uh, you know us safe in the capital city and indeed across the country. Again, a South London gang, gang guy involved in, a, involved in a shooting only the day before 
before. Mm. I mean, and previous, as you say, a string of convictions. And again, totally, totally unsuspicious circumstances in which a load of police, armed police, are following a car that has been linked to not just one, but two shootings in the previous few yeah. days and weeks. Yeah. They didn't even know it was Chris Cabra in the car. And then, again, when, when police car pulls in front of you, you're surrounded by other cars, they shout, armed police, get mm. stop, get out of the car. If you don't get out of that car, and you, you can see some of the footage yeah. here, we've got from the dash cam footage, and, and you're smashing and ramming your car back and forward, what do you yeah. think is going to happen? Yeah. We need to be congratulating these people and not having the IOPC uh, calling for prosecution, not having the Crown Prosecution Service having them uh, done for, you know, trying to get them done for murder, not having them facing gross misconduct and losing Ridiculous. their job. And also, God, because his name went out of the public eye, which was not necessary, this man has now had to go into hiding because there's a 10 grand bounty yeah. on his head mm. from the, the way, gangland killers. It's worth pointing out that it was very cold weather, which is obviously why he had a balaclava in the... Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 And yeah. gunshot residue yes. was found yeah. on the yeah. sleeve. But the other thing I just say, that at this very sad time, my thoughts are not with his conniving yeah. family. Yeah. Isn't right. it amazing yeah. that the Sadiq Khans, who's the race big... What a disgrace. Grace. And many yeah. others. They're Absolute. talking about, mm. we're sorry, sorry for the family. Do you know what I want to say to his parents? Maybe you should have done a bit a better job as a parent. Yeah, Because exactly if my right. kid was doing that sort of stuff, yeah. they would be so lost in the oh, you remember, Disgraceful Also, statement. if you remember... And the CPS, if you, same yeah. mealy-mouthed things, our thoughts remain with the Cabba yeah. family. Well, well, my thoughts remain well, yeah. with all the people that he would have killed otherwise yeah. if he wasn't already dead. But what dead. is that all about? Yeah. I mean, I remember the incident itself when it happened, and obviously it was front-page news then, but I don't remember anybody, either from the police or from the Crown Prosecution Service, or anybody at all, or Sadiq Khan, talking about the manner in which he was trying to get away. Yeah. It wasn't until we saw that footage of him driving a Q8, a very high-speed car... Expensive. Uh, very expensive car, right into a police vehicle, yeah. potentially to run over a copper, potentially to get past him. Yeah. You know, you just don't do he that. He should be given a medal mm. and not face... The it's the fact that we see this again and again. This, I, mean, I spoke to a police officer on my show uh, this week, Tony Long, who'd gone through a similar thing. Yeah, again, yeah, yeah. murder cleared. And again, this process that takes years yeah. and years and years, and it's happened to our soldiers, yeah. fought yeah. in Afghanistan, in Northern Ireland, uh, uh, in, in Iraq. And this process, you think, oh, they've been cleared. It goes on and it goes on and it goes on. I'm, I will be really surprised if we don't see the Kappa family bringing some sort of civil case. I just I think we've got a, you know, naming C C uh, uh, Sergeant Blake what was, you know, horrible. But once someone is in the dock for murder, then I'm a journalist. I believe in disclosure. I don't believe in keeping those things secret. The scandal here is that he was ever in the dock in the yeah. first mm. place. Mm. We've yeah. got to protect armed officers yeah. in these circumstances. Well, I mean, it wasn't relevant. His, uh, well, Cabba, Cabba's background it wasn't relevant in that trial because they didn't know it was Chris Cabba who was driving... Uh, that vehicle, so it was it, it yeah. was irrelevant to which. No, but I would say it's it was made it a right no, killing. Yeah, 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 no but what is what I find extraordinary is the way that this has been turned, as it always is, into a race incident. Yeah. Uh, Something to divide. Yeah, yeah. no, we well, get so-called black community leaders. Yeah. Sorry, who appointed you? Who elected you? Who are you accountable yeah. to? And the idea that the idea that this absolute violent criminal scrot, um, God rest his soul, not. Um, the idea that he represents mm. the black community or any black person in this country mm. is is an absolute abomination. Just because it's a white officer and it's a black a, a person who's shot doesn't mean that race has come into it. It's totally Nothing to do surely, with race. surely that's why it's relevant. You know, it's relevant for the case, not because um, it may not be relevant to the murder charge, but what it is relevant to uh, is to the circumstances under which the why gunshot were they following was fired. Him? Yeah. Why were they following him? Yeah. Why did the gunshot get fired in the way that it did? I think that's all relevant to the case, and I don't care what the judge said. He was wrong. And, and, Quite frankly, and Sadiq Khan's statement was a disgrace. Yeah. It, it, yeah. it, it exuded disappointment that yeah. Sergeant yes, Blake had it? been acquitted. And he said, "We still have to think about, uh, you know, the suspicions among the black community yeah, about yeah. Uh, about." Yeah. Uh, I know, it's nonsense. Outrageous. It's absolutely yeah, it's nonsense. Nonsense. No wonder, apparently, the quote oh, "black community" again. I don't like that term. There's no white. Yeah, community. like all black people uh, are criminals. Exactly. I mean, again, something. yeah, that's racist to also yeah. to assume that all black people think the same because of the pigmentation of their skin. We don't all think the same on everything. I mean, it's just quite bizarre. But but. But the idea that, in some way, that you know, that turning that into a race a, a, a issue is going to ha is going to help things. The, one of the reasons why there is so much distrust is because that narrative is perpetrated yeah, yeah, yeah. again and again and again, and it does a massive disservice. Because, by the way, young black men. Do you know who the the biggest perpetrators of death against young black men are? Young, yeah. black, young black men. Black men. Yeah. Of now, um, 
we don't want to eat into your own time here. So uh, it's over to you for the number four um, yeah. reason why we're here. Well, this is another bit of race baiting in yeah. my view. And, and again, and this is this incessant demand we're getting uh, for reparations for the transatlantic slave trade. Because yeah. an awful lot of people who are historically completely and utterly ignorant seem to think that there was never any slave. The world, we were living in the Garden of Eden until they had the British Empire. Everyone was lovely <laughs> to each other all times. And then suddenly nasty white people did nasty things to black people. Now, the slave trade was an abomination. Of course it was. Who doesn't think that? Lots of things slave, were yeah, there, weren't they? But slave, the slave trade had happened yeah. time immemorial. We are the only empire not to have a slave a trade, but to end the slave trade. And yet we've got yeah. numerous countries, <laughs> Caribbean countries coming together, led by the Barbadian Prime Minister, calling for reparations. And we're not talking about sort of, you know, a few thousand pounds no. per, and per descendant. Yeah. By the way, no one alive today yeah. was a victim of the slave trade. Um, we're talking about billions and even trillions 19 of pounds. trillion I mean, is the top estimate. Silly, silly 19 sums of trillion. Money. But this is no. because the Prime Minister <laughs> right. will have been <laughs> yeah. at, at the Chogham Summit, this is the Commonwealth Health of Government Summit uh, in Samoa uh, for the last few days. Yeah. And uh, after a 28 28 hours yeah. journey. Happened. 28 hours there, 28 could, hours back. You could go to the moon two and back in that time. Um, what did he go by a bus? Not, <laughs> I wish he would, I wish he would go to the moon. Did he go over land? A whole group of Caribbean <laughs> nations, whole group of African nations all say this is definitely, we, no. should, we want an apology from the, from the, the king for, for a slave trade. And, and it's just mad. But we've got new secretary general who's going to be elected or decided on mm. whatever their system is in the next uh, few months. And all three candidates say they want reparations. So, by the way, does our own foreign secretary, David, David yeah. This is madness. You're going to have people like me and you and people watching this right now whose, whose family members uh, years gone by worked as peasant farmers or in the mills, yeah. working horrible, having a horrible existence, being asked to pay reparations to people who've never suffered from slavery. I mean, it's an insane. It's ridiculous. It's These totally people mad. have just got to be told. They're going to sit down and say, thank no. you for your request for slavery reparations, but the answer's no, and yeah. it always will be, and stop wasting our time. The, uh, the proposition that somehow people alive today who never knew slavery, who of course have yeah. no responsibility for slavery, somehow have to pay mm. to compensate but for King it. Charles it's just, not, it does, it's just King doesn't Charles, make sense. King Charles has, has not completely um, you know, dismissed it, though. I mean, he's... Because he's, he's so woke. He's got more money to give away. Because he's so woke. You know, if you want to pay some money to somebody, go ahead. You've got loads of it. Yeah. But don't give it to yourself. Sell a portrait. Uh, on the Green Chain Walk mm. near Bromley, sort yeah. of in Orpington direction, there is a wonderfully preserved bench with an amazing view, and it is the bench upon which William Wilberforce sat yeah. with others and figured out how to end the slave trade. Right. I strongly recommend that people go on that Green Chain Walk, because it's lovely, mm. have a... Have a little moment on that bench. The view is terrific, mm -hmm. and give your heads a wobble. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> said, right. Americans like to have a go at us for being yeah. the kind of propagators of slavery, and it's always good fun to say, "Yeah, well, we abolished it 30 years before you lot did." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Also, right. we way, started abol why with why the, the abolition of slavery was us. Yeah, why we don't they it. want um, reparations from the the black African? Slave, basically the yeah. sellers. Yeah. I mean, you know, they they were literally back Africans, you know, herding their own people and treating mm. them as, yeah. as as cattle but, but also, and selling them to white people. But no one asks, you know, these countries for. But it wasn't it's just Africa so either, was it? I Every mean, there were slaves. Done it. In, but it's bad. There were slaves, the it's Vikings. Bad. The Vikings took slaves. I want my reparations from yeah. Italy. Yeah. I yeah. seen those movies about yeah. Rome. Yeah. The yeah. Romans yeah. had slaves. I mean, everyone's seen Ben Hur and all that. Gladiator. I mean, a bit more up to date, please, Kevin. Yeah. I mean, the thing of Ben Hur. I mean, that came out about 1950. I've seen those. Movies, yeah, no, know. I know. But the point is, is that you know, it's ridiculous that it's Full become, of again it's become a race thing. I wonder why. Is it because there are people who make an awful lot of money out of the race business? But there's yeah. even people in America saying about you know black Americans getting uh, slave reparations. What Oprah Winfrey, who's a billionaire, yeah. Yeah. what getting reparations from someone who's yeah. working to, you know in a factory in the mm. UK? I mean, it's, it's probably insane. It's, so, you know, it's actually immoral as well. You know what? And they the can... fact that people even give these people the time of day. Is where, again, they need to be told do, very clearly, do, no. Do you know what they're considering doing in the city of San Francisco? Giving oh, every yeah. single black resident yeah. $5 million. Right. <laughs> but that's, that. but that's, that's not why, mad, is it? Yeah, that's why the, the city... <laughs> I'm of, moving. The yeah, city, that's, right. that's why the city of San Francisco is Polish. overrun uh, with fentanyl-addicted... <laughs> yeah lunatics yeah. who, will, who can't even look at themselves yeah. because they can't recognise themselves in a window. And you can't apparently rent a car in San Francisco yeah. uh, because as soon as you park it, somebody breaks into it and steals yeah, it. No, it's, but you know. again, you're just into this whole this absurd, ridiculous, sort of middle-class, left-wing, white guilt. Yeah, I mean, that's just, it. I'm not guilty of anything that I haven't done. Well, I'm guilty done. of something. Yes, you're yeah. definitely guilty of something. I'm, I'm not, I'm, not I'm guilty not of anything that I haven't done, that my family didn't do, my ancestors didn't. Exactly. And if some silly upper-class twits want, or oh, the Archbishop of Canterbury want to go along and give 
with their own oh. money. We go, well, off you go. But it's nothing to do with the yeah. rest of us. And here's the thing. A lot of these countries are asking for reparations, like people in the Caribbean. They're actually middle-income countries. Right. They're not very, very poor nations. No. And you know what? If you haven't managed to make a living, you've got a beautiful country, beautiful tour, you know, tourism mm. opportunities. If you haven't able to make money and put your people into a situation where they're mm. doing well, that's on they're you. They're hustling. They're it hustling. Is. They are, it's yeah. a massive hustle. Hustling it is a massive cash. hustle. Believe it or not, that's the end of the show, though. We've what? reached the end of the show. Oh. You pick up your reparations on the way out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that's all from us on this week's Clash of Titans. You can catch us throughout the week on Talk. Remember, subscribe to hear even more from us on Talk's YouTube channel.